Allah knows what response to send when. And He's the best of those who respond. And even though you don't think Allah has responded, Allah has. And Allah has responded with the answer that you, is better for you. Not the answer that you want, the answer that you need. What you want is immature. What you need, Allah knows. So He responds immediately whether you see it or not. وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ وَأَهْلَهُ مِنَ الْكَرْبِ الْعَظِيمِ And we rescued him and his family from the great disturbance. A disturbance that brings about distress and sadness and fears called karb. وَجَعَلْنَا ذُرِّيَّتَهُ هُمُ الْبَاقِينَ And we made his offspring, them the only ones. This is hasr because of whom? The ones that remain. In other words, even though other people were boarded onto the ship, and other believers survived too, what we're learning here from Allah Azza wa Jal is that they didn't, their generations didn't survive. The only generations that survived were the sons of Nuh alayhi salam that were believers that came with him. One of them we know about that didn't come on board. But the, or perhaps he got married again, and he started another family because humanity started over again. And then Sam, Ham, and Yafis, the three sons that we know about. Sam and Ham and Yafis, and from his lineage, from their lineage, all of humanity comes. Uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam is from the lineage of Sam. Of his three sons, Sam, Ham, and Yafis, Ibrahim alayhi salam is from the Sam side. وَتَرَكْنَا عَلَيْهِ فِي الْآخَرِينَ And we left on, on it. Meaning we left people committed to his path. In those who came in the last of days. In the final of them. ثُمَّ أَغْرَقْنَا الْآخَرِينَ Then after we rescued him, then we drowned all the others left. وَإِنَّ مِنْ شِيَعَتِهِ لَإِبْرَاهِيمِ And from his same faction, the same thinking, the same ideology, the same group comes Ibrahim. Ibrahim alayhi salam is, you know, from the, by the way, from the lineage of, of Sam, you have Aad and Thamud, the nations of Aad and Thamud are from there too. Ibrahim alayhi salam was born in the city of Ur, or Ur, in Iraq, the ancient city. You have to come to Allah بِقَلْبٍ salim, With a sound, healthy, good, Heart. And what does a sound heart mean? The same thing Allah described in Surah Fatir. Fitrat Allah allati fatara nasa alayha. The molding, the carving of Allah, the nature, the good nature He, he created in you that he, he poured into you when you were like 120 days in the womb of your mother. That nature, if you can maintain that goodness inside of you, then revelation will make sense to you, you'll make the right conclusions. Wallahu khalaqakum wa ma ta'amaloon. And Allah created you and everything that you do. This is a very interesting statement by Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah created you and everything that you do. Here it could mean Allah created you and everything that you make. Because what you do is you make idols. Allah created your idols too. But some have taken this at a philosophical level. Like people like Razi can't help themselves. Rahimahullah is a very philosophical scholar. So he says Allah created us and He also created our actions results. So He, gave, so he separated our actions from their results. And so the statement implies that you can do whatever you want. You can work out, you can exercise, you can eat right, etc., etc. But your health, which is the result, isn't up to you. That in the end is something Allah owns. Wallahu khalaqakum wa ma ta'amalun. So the action may be yours, but the results are cre- a creation of Allah. He stares at the stars and he's disgusted at the fact that, you know, they used to have a festival where they used to go celebrate their worship. And one of the objects of their worship were stars. So they were going to go out of the city and go make a you know, a big giant religious festival where they would leave the city alone. And this is where we learned when, when Ibrahim alayhi salam you know, made judath, made like bits and pieces out of all of the idols. But he looked at the, the stars, the same stars that they worship, and the same stars that's supposed to guide you to Allah. And he says, فَقَالَ إِنِّي سَقِيم. He said, no, I'm sick. And he wasn't lying. He was sick of the religion. It made him sick to his stomach. I'm disgustingly sick. إِنِّي سَقِيم. So he said, I'm not coming with you guys. His father said, let's go, let's go. It's a big festival. Let's go. He said, I, I'm, I'm sick. He looked at the stars and all those stars. I'm not going to go worship them. I'm sick. فَقَالَ إِنِّي سَقِيم. فَتَوَلَّوْ عَنْهُ مُدْبِرِينَ Then they turned away from him, putting their backs to him. So he's the only one left in the village. فَرَاغَ إِلَىٰ آلِهَتِهِمْ So he turned towards the, the, those gods. He turns his attention to those gods. فَقَالْ He says to them, أَلَا تَأْكُلُونَ Hey, you're not eating anything. 
He sees all this food in front of those idols. Because they put food and flowers and milk and all this stuff in front of them. And he goes to the idol face to face. He goes, hey, you're not eating. You're not going to eat. Malakum. What's wrong with you? La tantiqun. You can't say anything. You don't talk back. He's expressing his frustration. This clearly he's a young man at the time. Clearly. فَرَاغَ عَلَيْهِمْ ضَرْبًا Then he turned around and he smacked one of them. Bil yameen. With his right hand. And then what happened after he smacked one of them and it fell to the ground, then you know what happened next, right? Then he went to town on it and we've already read about that. So Allah just alludes to the fact that first he talked to them first. Like, hey, you look hungry. He's, he's so enraged and he just went at it. Now, فَأَقْبَلُوا إِلَيْهِ يَزِفُّونَ Then they came at him, losing their minds, gone crazy. What have you done? What have you done? قَالَ أَتَعْبُدُونَ مَا تَنْحِتُونَ He said again, do you worship what you've carved? قَالُوا بْنُوا لَهُ بُنْيَانًا They said, build a building for him. In other words, first you build this massive tower, then you set it on fire. You don't just build a fire and you keep building it, you keep throwing wood on it. You build this bunyan, huge building that stands on its own. Then you set it on fire. فَأَلْقَوْ فَأَلْقُوهُ فِي الْجَحِيمِ Then throw him into the loud flame. Once you set it on fire, the fire itself will be so loud, it'll sound like a roar. Then you throw him in it. فَأَرَادُوا بِهِ كَيْدًا Then they wanted to plan something for him. Because people were starting to be impressed with Ibrahim a.s. So they wanted to scare this kid straight. So they build this large fire, they grab him, and they're about to chuck him in through the catapult or whatever, or push him into the fire. And they're thinking this kid will come to his senses and say, Sorry, 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 okay, I'll promise I'll never do anything like that again. You know? But he doesn't turn back. فَجَعَلْنَاهُمُ الْأَسْفَلِينَ Then he made them the lowest, which Allah keeps ambiguous from us, what he did with them. Allah just tells us he made them the lowest, which means they were humiliated. It could also mean that they sunk, they were killed, we don't know. But we do know that Ibrahim a.s. escaped. قَالَ إِنِّي ذَاهِبٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي سَيَهْدِينَ He said, I'm going to my master, he'll guide me. Like, you know, how beautiful. Ibrahim a.s. is going somewhere, he's going to Palestine. He's leaving Iraq. And by the way, going from Palestine to Iraq, between Iraq and Palestine and Sham, there's a huge desert. And you can't go through that because you won't survive. So you have to go along the Firat, the river Firat. North. So Ibrahim Aisha went on a prolonged journey where he finally ends up in Palestine. And so, uh, you know, and then from there, of course, you have Mecca, where he's told to make hijrah and leave the child. And then eventually comes this haq, etc., etc. So you have Ibrahim Aisha, and he's not saying, I'm going to Palestine, so I'm going to, my, I'm going to Allah. Inni dahibun ya Rabbi. Sayyadeen, he'll guide me. Rabbi habli min as salihin. Master, grant me from the righteous. What he could also mean here is grant me righteous company. And Allah gives him children of the righteous. He grants him children. حليم, then he congratulated him of a forbearing, loving, compassionate. Hilm is actually a, a patient, tolerant child. Hilm also means that you don't get overwhelmed. You don't overreact. You take things and you can absorb them and you can deal with them in a calm way. This is Hilm. And it's actually a very rare quality described in the Qur'an. Other than for Allah, which is, of course, Hilm is used, Halim is used for Allah Himself. Other than Allah, it's only used for two individuals in the entire Qur'an. It's used for Ibrahim alayhi salam, and it's used for Ismail alayhi salam. And that's it. Those are the only two individuals it's used for. فَبَشَّرْنَاهُ بِغُلَامٍ حَلِيمٍ فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَعَهُ السَّعِيَةِ then when he, when his son reached the age where he could run with him, he could go around and make the efforts with him, he could back him up. قَالَ يَا بُرَيَّا He said, my son, إِنِّي أَرَى فِي الْمَنَامِ I keep seeing in a dream, in the dream, أَنِّي أَذْبَحُكَ That I am slaughtering you. فَانْظُرْ Then you observe, think about it. مَاذَا تَرَى What do you think it means? قَالَ He said, يَا أَبَتِي Dad, I love you so much. يَا أَبَتِي my beloved, respected father, if al ma tu'mar, do without thinking what you've been told to do. Just do it, dad. This is his hilm. 
اِفْعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَرْ The father must have cried when he heard that. Because it's not just the obedience of his child. Now he knows what he has to do. سَتَجِدُنِي إِن شَاءَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الصَّابِرِينَ You're gonna find me, if Allah wills, I'll, I'll do my best. But then the rest is up to Allah. From those who are patient. Because I don't know my future. I don't know if I'll be patient tomorrow or not. My intention is there. But since it's a matter of the future, I can't even be certain of my own internal state in the future. So I'm going to add, inshallah. If Allah wills, you'll find me from the patient.